Ready? Good afternoon. Fabulous Friday. I wanted to take an opportunity to reconvene the special call meeting of the Alamance Burlington Board of Education. Today is Friday, September the 1st. Um, our board attorney, Adam Mitchell, is joining us via phone. And I believe Mr. Carter, uh, one of our commissioners, is en route and will join us in progress. Um, to those around the table and to our staff members from county and school, board, or the school system, thank you for being with us this week um, for your commitment to this very important issue. And to those of you in the audience, thank you for being here with us, not just today, but throughout the week. Um, and to those watching via live stream at home, and of course, to our friends from the media, at this time, I will yield the floor to Mr. Paisley to open the Board of Commissioners meeting. We are officially opened, opening our County Commissioners meeting. Uh, I again appreciate everybody being here. We have been asked by two or three people to speak a little louder today. It's the folks sitting over here to my right uh, cannot always hear. So uh, we'll do the best we can to communicate as well as we can um don't throw rocks if you can't hear us <laughs> additionally uh, i've talked to all five county commissioners including that paisley guy <laughs> and we have all agreed we are here to complete our business hopefully uh, all five of us are in support of the school system uh there's been too much including Unfortunately, on the media, name calling and things of that sort, I hope that will not continue in this meeting today. Uh, I brought my own gavel, it's not going to depend upon Sandy. <laughs> uh, and if the county commissioners are out of line, then I know how to use it. Uh, and Ms. Grace, I, I'm sure you can handle the school board members. So let's all keep it civil. Let's move this meeting forward and accomplish what we need to accomplish. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Paisley. To follow up with that, um, as we open the conversations today, um, let's conduct ourselves in a respectful and professional way that we can all be proud of. The public is watching, our children are watching. We all want to walk out of this meeting today with our heads held high. So, this time, I will turn it over to Mr. Rogers for um, to open us up with a quick update. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this after, well, early, late this morning, if my time right, late this morning, we received an update, um, some good, a good update that Newland Elementary has been uh, released or given a good post test. Um, uh, SASA restora Restoration is uh, currently pulling their equipment out of Newland Elementary, and we're hopeful that it, as of five o'clock, this afternoon, um, it'll be reopened to staff and, and ready to receive students on Tuesday morning. So we're excited about that uh, news from New Elementary. Um, we are um, receiving uh, this, late this afternoon and actually just minutes before this meeting, we're starting to receive uh, more um, inspection reports from our um, mold inspectors that are, uh, or sanitation inspectors that are visiting our campuses. Um, we did get, um, some not so favorable responses from five of our campuses about uh, airborne mold. Um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, toxigenic mold at five of our campuses. This will be East Lawn Elementary, Hall River Elementary, Eastern High, Graham High, and Woodlawn uh, Middle, which actually had an initial good report, um, but now we're working to get some rest. Uh, mediation efforts in the, the, that campus as well. So um, that is, again, that's fresh, just as we were coming into the meeting, we've got that um, that update. At the other campuses, we're continuing um, the mediation effort and we're continuing to be hopeful um, and planning. I met with principals with uh, lunchtime this afternoon uh, about the first day of school plans for Tuesday. Um, uh, our staff are excited to receive students and um, talk to them about various plans as far as uh, what we, we may need to do across the district to adjust um, possible locations or uh, 
various um, ensure ensure school starts on Tuesday. So we're still working towards plans to maximize the use of our spaces that will be available. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Yes, Mr. Hooker, do you want to add? Do we have any um, do we have new numbers or new um, new information as far as I know picking up for the schools that are left? Um, so, of course, um, county commissioners uh, approved use of capital reserves, four million capital reserves, one million in lottery funds in the last meeting on Wednesday. Um, so that does uh, obviously with new schools coming in, some schools that um, continue to need remediation. Um, those schools, uh, my total that I've worked up is. Just shy of one point, I mean, excuse me, $4.1 million still needed. Still needed at this point. Yeah, For those that may not have heard that, that's $4.1 million still needed um, at this point. Additional consideration would be with, um, if we do need to do, uh, if we're looking at some options of doing a hybrid at some of the secondary schools, or possibly. On an A day, B day plan where uh, you may use a campus and um, one school would be on that campus on A day, and the other school would be on B day. And they're not on campus, they may be at, um, having synchronous virtual learning at home. So we may need um, assistance with hotspots, um, do estimate around $7,500 a month on how many schools we have. The A B A B A J B J. Yes, ma'am. Is that campus or is that district wide or is that in the five schools that were identified? That will be if specific schools uh, required to be off campus. So if, okay. if there are remediation efforts that require um, for students and staff to not be on campus, then uh, we are looking at planning may need to go to uh, utilize campuses for an A J B J. Is that something that can communicate to the parents today? Well, we're, obviously, the mediation efforts going on on many of our campuses, so it may not be today, but we, we won't be able to get a good understanding as far as what campus needs to share with the back plans for those. Okay, so at this moment, we're still on regular schedule for Tuesday. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, board members? Yes. I'm going to put them on the spot. And we just get a rundown, of starting with Moulin and Andrews, that is completely a rundown of all the schools that are currently affected. Please, please. read. Right, just three names. Moulin and Andrews, like Mr. Rogers mentioned, they said were affected. You know, we contracted for Passer. They've been cleared in Andrews now, five o'clock today. So other schools that are affected that are all uh, all these uh, we either have builder services in there staff has moved to other locations awaiting some decision they proceed with mediation alexander wilson <laughs> no elementary was an ad today i should clarify because of the, the way we've tried to expedite walkthroughs, air quality testing, and surface testing in the name of getting students in school in a timely manner, test results are lagging. So what we've been doing is basically reporting from the field, trying to find out what we're seeing visually, give us the ability to, to go ahead and Close that one down if we think that's what that needs to happen visually. We did AOs through, we didn't see something that would say we need to do something here, but the lag in receiving the uh, test results, uh, the test results came in, it, it revealed we had a few areas in that building that need remediation, professional remediation. So that's why AO is an ad. Here at Jordan, Sloan Elementary, Holt, 
Garrett Elementary, Park Elementary, Cold River Elementary, Island Elementary, which that's only in the office area, newer building. We have struggles there with controlling entity in the office. We're working on that. Pleasant Grove Elementary, I mentioned there. That's basically an entire, uh, entirely remodeled building. We feel like it's only on the furniture surfaces. They move the furniture into the gym for all those months so that they could work on the building. We feel like the heat in there caused some issues. The uh, aspergillus penicillin developing on the furniture, and then we moved it back into the classrooms, not knowing it's there. So that's why it grows on it. South Graham Elementary. South Mevin Elementary, Sylvan Elementary, Bellevue Middle, Southern Middle, Turntine Middle, Western Middle, and Woodlaw Middle is an ad based on the air testing results we just received. Main Street Academy. Cummings High School, Eastern High School, Graham High School, Southern High School, Western High School, Eastern High School. That's what I have for now. What is it? What is it? I mean, we got um, all these. I mean, we could have nailed that in a couple of seconds. Yeah. So, what isn't got this stuff? Before that, is has, have they all been tested now? Yes, but we don't have the, the, the results. But you have walked through every place. Walked through, and that's what triggered some of the, uh, the shutdowns that we've had in the past couple of days. The results of the walkthroughs are lagging. So, getting the results from the air quality test, and that, like the five that Mr. Rogers mentioned, we did not have those before. Some of those were shut down on visual, some were not. So you don't you don't really know what you don't know until you get the results. So if you ask which ones are not, I'd preface it with not yet. Okay, I'm gonna knock on wood, so tell me what's going on. Southeast maybe. E.M. Yoder, Lawn Elementary. Hillcrest Elementary, Smith Elementary, Graham Elementary, Virtual School. <laughs> that's, that's all right, right there. Graham Middle School, C Tech, Southeast. I, I mentioned ABEC, but they're at the ACC campus, the early college. Excuse me, have you done here and maintenance and no, we were holding on uh maintenance transportation at this building they did this morning do sellers gone because we do see students there for some services and uh students in the virtual school have to come in for testing or the earlier testing starts for high school students with some of the CTE classes so we want to go ahead and get that one checked but we don't have the result for sellers gone Mr. Atkins is pulling up a dashboard that we created uh, to share with our families um, that went out yesterday. So it, just so you can see the visual. Two schools haven't been updated. You'll see on the right side, um, AO Elementary and Woodlawn Middle are on the right side. They'll have to be moved to the remediation um, column. Those are two things that change. Yes, Mr. Turner. Thank you. Um, here uh, just uh, i'd like to stay focused um on wednesday we authorized funding for remediation at six schools with an estimate we also funded remediation at five other schools without an estimate what i need is um the cost to remediate those five schools to make sure it matches what we allocated so uh, the cafeteria and surface and sea wing at garrett elementary south mebbin the back hall services small and high multiple buildings uh surface mold but not all the buildings 
Ian Holt Library and A through C classrooms and AW the 2000s wing. So what is the cost to remediate in those five buildings? So the remaining, so what so I just five. Just so those five, five. seeing in Southern High. Maybe Garrett. Garrett, South, South Melbourne, Eastern, Ian Holt, AW. Our math turns out to be two million eight hundred thirty five thousand. So, you need an additional six hundred thousand dollars for remediation at those schools. And what we what we um, allocate, we allocated two point two three five million. So you're saying you need an additional six hundred thousand to remediate those spaces in those schools. Um, is that based on actual bids, or is that what's that based on? Actual bids. Now, just to keep things moving, in addition to so the six hundred thousand, we need to keep in mind. In addition to uh, now eleven schools that we allocated money for on Wednesday, what additional schools? Require remediation that we have not funded. My last name is Hood Check me. Right, Turn Time Middle School, Graham High School. I have Southern High School, Island Elementary School, Pleasant Grove Elementary, Grove Park Elementary, Grave Street. We also have additional cleaning at Cummings High School and Broadview Middle School for their HVAC systems due to the toxigenic mold. Also have AO Elementary, which we do not have a quote for yet. And the five schools which I started the meeting off with. I can read those if you can. Yeah. Okay. This is additional cleaning for HVAC systems to be needed at East Lawn. Elementary, Paul River Elementary, Eastern High School, Graham High School, and we're on those. those we'll need quotes for the HVAC system. Are those five? Yes, sir. There's five additions. Which Graham, I know, is on the list I read earlier. I had a comment to those numbers. Yes, sir. So, um, Mr. Turner, some of those locations I mentioned earlier, reporting from the field, what we were seeing and trying to expedite getting remediation in there. So we in school on time, the lagging reports are revealing some other areas that were not in the initial report. So that's going to cause some additional cost to some of those sites. So what we need is um, scope and severity at, at all of these new schools. So like what we did last time, I just need to know what that is and what the cost is at those locations uh, in the order. But I mean, if we're going in order, starting with turn time. Well, I can I can give the price if you want to give the scope and severity. You have more information. Yes, I can speak to that. So for turn time middle school, we've been quoted seven hundred eighty-five thousand seven hundred twenty dollars. So Miss, can you keep it running? Uh, You're six hundred thousand. Seven twenty-five. Seven eighty-five and seven twenty. So at turn time, there, there's mold not in every room, but rooms throughout the campus. Um, all the hallways, I'd say. So that's what pulls it into 
old school. Can I ask a question? Yes. Being the parent of three children who went through time, and when I was first on the board, I was always asking about the windows being replaced. Because I know there was mold around the windows. Some wouldn't shut, some would. There were a lot of teachers that had some kind of surgeries there. And I need to know about the windows. Because if we clean everything and those windows are still the same, it's the circular door, so to speak. That's always been an issue. The lower level, seventh grade was down there. The windows open up, kind of like a daylight basement thing. Um, I'm just curious if these windows have been looked at, make sure this doesn't happen again. I, I, I just don't want anything to happen again. And I'll, while I'm got the floor for just a second, all of these things right here, you just mentioned the HVAC, or all of these schools HVACs going to be cleaned. I would hate to think we clean the school and then turn that on and it's like a giant sneeze going through there. So that's, I'm, I'm just asking questions. And at 64, I have to ask it while I think it. From the HVAC, I can answer that, okay. but I'll have uh, Mr. Hook answer the question. Okay. The HVAC, yes, that's why I, I was sharing that information at the beginning of the meeting was additional cost for uh, okay. cleaning the HVAC system. And, uh, and is, is this done by the same folks like Sasser and Builder Services? Okay. I'm going to speak about the windows. And so far, what we've done um, in Andrews and Newland, has a clean network and it's repeated the school. Let me just add Craig and I went to Harvey Newland yesterday and I could eat off the floor. That, and I talked to the cafeteria ladies who really know the scope of things. And they, they felt safe, the school was excellent, and they everything was really great. 2,000 drop cords. I never seen nothing like it in my life. But um, we walked it and so um what we've done uh, since then is, is to decouple HVAC cleaning from the remediation okay. unless oxygenic mold is discovered. But we do need to make a plan to clean all the HVAC systems. In the essence of time, expediting remediation to get back into school on time, moving the HVAC this is where there's no toxigenic mold is what has been done, um, as well as removing cost. That cost is going to have to come back in because we essentially have never cleaned HVAC systems, or specifically ducts. And I know of. So, um, with regard to the windows, uh, turn time is part of the ESSER project. Uh, ESSER dollars only go so far. Replacing the windows on the front, you can see from the road. Uh, modern windows, I just call them thermopane windows, like we'd call it home. Actual 2023 but, uh, windows. Uh, that have real insulating power. And ESSER projects, you know, those are based around clean air and clean air systems. But you can couple that with Windows, windows and doors because you, you're doing a better job at uh, cooling and uh, humidifying. You want to keep it captured within the school. So that's why the ESSER projects will allow you to put windows in. Uh, answer to the question about windows, other than the ones on the front of the building, they will be changed. They need to be changed. They're single pane. And, uh, we came with the school windows. Uh, what we have that happens there, you refer to the mold friends mentioned. When it gets hot outside, the windows can't keep the heat out. And then we're cooling, building that probably wasn't designed with cooling systems. So there's retrofitable cooling. So when cooling on the inside, out the humidification, and the sun's warming on the outside, just heat in general. So we're making water inside of the windows, which is condensation, just what you'd expect. Is it the condensation is every day growing mold? So we'll come back. Yes. And the windows need to be done. I'd say that's a similar story at all the schools that we can't do dehumidification at or we don't have the proper windows to capture what we're making. Well, it's really kind of unfair to do this and have the persona. We're going to be clean. We are going to be clean at the moment. 
but if we're not replacing some of the very obstacles that can add to this problem, we will be right back at that situation again. You're exactly right. Sorry, Craig. I had to oh, get thanks. in there. I forget. Replacing windows on the front, but not elsewhere. Right. It's going to look good from the front, but the back is going to still be. A lot of them wouldn't be closed completely. The, you, you can't get parts for those windows any longer, um, so uh, I guess we struggle with. That would say they're too old. Graham High School um, nine hundred fifty thousand dollars for mediation efforts. There's more mediation, but not HVAC. Not HVAC, so that we'll have to get an um, updated quote to include the HVAC. So at Graham High, there's mold, there's mold throughout all, all the buildings on, buildings on surfaces. We have a lot of water intrusion there. Water intrusion is what leads to the oxygenic uh, molds, like the type that they have there. But there's a lot of water that's coming in there, especially in the CTE buildings that were yeah. just, just remodeled. Oh, that's one that uh, I mentioned in the board meeting earlier this week. I'm going to be putting out to bid here in the next couple of months. Just in the completion stages of design. Mr. Rogers, could you program high $950,000 without the HVAC meeting? Say that there are links in a new park? Well, it's not a new park, Graham. Graham High School was a remodel. There's no additions other than the garage for the, for the fire truck. So they remodeled um, basically all the CTE classes and the art classrooms. The roof had given way for, for the remodel. Is that where the new lab was that we all met with the um, state governor? Um, sorry, I can't think of we all met there because the seats were red. It was like the ultimate new lab. That we got some kind of major grant. Angela Boss wrote it, and it was we toured it. My time. Okay. Well, we're sticking on Graham. Um, in the prior meeting, we discussed that the plan to remediate is called the ROM. Is that right? We're calling get my terms right. Is that cost? cost. The way the cost is. building services cost the rough order of magnitude versus a. The ROM is based on a plan. The plan to remedy to open Graham High School include necessarily putting in the HVAC. That we need to get an updated quote, or updated ROM. I guess the point is can kids come back to school without the HVAC having been? We're not recommending. We're, we're being told not, it's not being recommended to us to allow students to return to that building without it. So the, the, rem, the remediation necessarily must include back cleaning in Grand High School because it's toxigenic mold uh, been found in the um, How about Southern High School? So this is a partial um, specific spaces which um, Mr. Hope can share 92,400. There's mold in the auditorium at Southern High School. The E buildings, the H buildings, you should be getting the report there that the files if there are any other other areas there. While we're going through this, is it possible to get quotes on the HVAC cleaning at these five high schools while we're sitting in this meeting? We've, we've requested, I know from one company, updated. Well, we just found this out as we were. This is we're working on it. I mean, because it's going to take a few minutes to go through this. Are they, are they working on it now? It, it's going to take, and we've been told several hours to work up quotes because it's more specific. Than, um, yeah. they give us ranges. They, they, we've contacted them. We've asked for updated quotes, so we're hopeful. That's a crucial part. Stage back. Mm -hmm. Everything will be just null and void if we don't get that clean. Island Elementary. Um, this is the mediation effort in the front office, only uh, $15,000. We can send it our HVAC tech, tech out there routinely 
summer, be aware of the issue out there. Continue to. All throughout the office area, all the service. They had some roofing in that area or just no, the community? It's a, a relatively new building. Okay. Market Grove, a quote for $185,000. Pleasant Grove, I'd mentioned it when I was reading the first list of schools. Most all those rooms have new tile. The whole school, every room has new um, HVAC. New ceiling tiles, new uh, electric wiring, new remodeled school. Like all that happened, they moved all of the uh, classroom furniture into the gym, which is not conditioned. It's been sitting in there quite a while. That's what caused this to aspergillus penicillin. It developed on the furniture. And when they finished the construction, they moved the furniture back into the classroom. It's the only place it's been found is on. Furniture. Still haven't got the, the air quality report. I suspect it's just on. The gym doesn't have air conditioning. So that one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars is to replace, just to clean it. Yeah. Grove Park is three hundred sixty thousand dollars. Grove Park has. Uh, Mold throughout all of the, uh, the old part of the building, not the newest wing that has four and five classrooms. Uh, stone wood surfaces throughout, backs of doors, uh, sides of desks, bottoms of desks. That sort of Main Street, um, $225,000. <clears throat> Main Street had some specific issues. Number six, 18, 20, and 22, uh, there, was, there was mold coming from water damage uh, building materials. In 18, 20, and 22, sometime in the, in the past, uh, they put um, some sort of um, wall panels, so sheetrock like wall panels. And in that building, over top of um, brick exterior walls, the water must have been coming through the brick exterior walls. So you can see mold around the, the bottom where there are holes in the wall. Whenever last night, and I could put my finger through the, through the wall, the brick. So there's a lot of rotting decay behind. You can see mold at the edges. In room number six, they must have had a plumbing leak for quite some time. You can see on the outside of a restroom wall in a classroom, rock wall had mold on it. Then there were two other classrooms in a different part of the building. It had uh, very humid air, and you could find uh, mold, what appeared to be the aspergillus penicillin mold, on the uh, sides of some desk and on cloth, cloth items in the you could tell that was coming from an HVAC system versus the floor that were from the building materials looked like they had come from water intrusion. What about the back building that had a special needs that was being so separate program in the very back? How about it? That's that's where um, that's where we had the, the two classrooms that had the humidity issue that caused the appearance of mold on the surfaces of some furniture and fabric items, as well as uh, classroom number six that had the mold and sheetrock. When you said building materials, were they adding on or remodeling or something with sitting? What does that mean? Well, it, it looks like they had water intrusion on uh, an exterior wall that's made of brick, and it was causing water to come either under or through the brick wall. At some point, they put um, Wall panels on the brick wall probably cover it, but I don't know that they fixed the intrusion before they covered it. So what, all those wall panels are rotted, so that's where the, the mold is coming. Okay, we, have, we do have two quotes for 
HVAC servicing at Cummings High School for $346,850. And at Broadview Middle School, $237,900. The five uh, that we just learned about with HVAC servicing needed. And then also we're waiting on um, plus quotes for AO elements. Are those competing GMs? We, uh, we have in uh, this most recent round, we did ask for um, faster and build their services. The, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. $346,850. $237,900. Thank, so Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is additional work and Cummings, in addition to what's been going on with the cleaning of surfaces and the has the cleaning of surfaces in Broadview and Cummings ended, or are they still working on those so that they are they still in the building or have they they need to come back to the building? They're still in, I believe they're still in the building. Right? They're still in the building. Those are uh, I call it extensive or more extensive than some of the other projects <clears throat> because of the um, type of mold they have. Those are the two schools where we had lots of water intrusion in 2017 from the, the roofs that were part of the roof litigation. Um, it's like a lot of water got in at that time and we fixed the roofs, but we didn't examine the interior to, to take care of that business. So lots of built-in cabinets all materials is having to be uh, demolished. It's, it's, it's a lot of it. It's expensive there. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what the. I mean, we're waiting for a quote from AO, but what is the scope and severity of the AO? AO, uh, 100s wing. There's uh, one air quality sample that came back elevated from that hallway one classroom that came back elevated on that hallway and in the media center uh, there was a uh, mold detected in an air sample media center years ago we did have water intrusion in the media center it's a subterranean lowered sunk, sunken or, or, yeah, yeah. sunken uh, low grade we had some issues with drainage that caused water to come in from underneath Underneath the floor, uh, sides of walls. That's been corrected, but when you do corrections like that, what we're finding out now is you need to examine what got wet and demo that and replace that. Before. In the back, there's the hall. It's like an extension of the And I remember I was always asking for heating or air conditioning because it was a long hall with glass that didn't have either and the teacher at the end was Mrs. Walsh and her room would be colder or warmer depending on what the weather was outside. Was there ever a Mitsubishi unit to keep that kind of consistent and they had that was mold in that particular area. It's like a tunnel kind of thing to have. Yeah, that that was not on the report other than the media center and the, the issues on the one hundreds hall. That's all we have at AO. Um, we had some teachers there express concern about the uh, windows on the 200s hall, which is not was not concern all through in the report. Those are the single pane windows like we have at turn time that we talked about. I think those are in the ESSER project to come out 200 swing in summer, but it's the same type of situation. They get really cold inside and you warm outside and they sweat. Those are actually aluminum frame windows, so they, they pit. So it's hard to tell the difference between the pitting and the dirt and mold. Mr. Rogers, is the. Uh... And I believe my four point one number is off. It was three point. I, I, I got the same number. What's that, what's that number? Three million seven hundred ninety-seven thousand eight hundred seventy dollars. Is that is that include the six hundred thousand? That includes the additional six hundred thousand. Yes, sir.
we have any idea, we might have quotes for AO and for the other four. Back. Are we talking about hour or are we talking about days? We were told uh, to, it would take a few hours to be able to work on quotes on days specifically for companies we contact. Who is that company? Building Services. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, emphasize exp expeditious work. I, I mean, I would like to, I would like to uh, consider a funding for, for those new schools that we've mentioned, and for the that we already have funding that need more funding for the HVACs, and then we can talk about, I guess, the the HVACs. Um, before I do this, um, a question and a comment. Mr. Stevens, I have a uh, Turntown Middle School was on this list. My fiance is a principal at Turntown Middle School. I have a student who goes to Turntown Middle School. Is there any conflict if I were to make a motion for running Turntown Middle School? Um. I'll also say that I have two students who go to Williams High School and I made a motion for Williams High School two days ago. Yeah, yeah I want to redo that, then we can redo that. No, I, I understand. I, I don't think there's a conflict necessarily um, because you're, you're not necessarily advocating for a certain vendor. You're advocating for the work to be done. I think that's proper. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. York, the, as I understand it, there are $7,500,000 roughly and bond funds that have been allocated to bond projects that you anticipate will not be used to finish those bond projects. Correct. Right. Right. Is it proper to use money for bond projects for mold removal? Technically, it is not. Okay. Is it proper to use capital reserves for mold removal? We believe that that's an appropriate use and that we can shuffle projects around bond projects that would be in line for the use of those funds. What I want to do is to make a motion which essentially transfers the capital reserve money that we have allocated to Graham High School roof project. The total that we need to do the, the remediations that we've mentioned here today. And then backfill that same amount of money with the bond with excess bond monies so that we don't lose any traction on the Graham High School. So we're essentially just Shifting the pots of money where it's legal to use the money it's already in the system. So, my motion is transfer funds from ABSS capital reserves previously allocated allocated to the Graham High School project, totaling three million seven hundred ninety-seven thousand eight hundred seventy dollars for mold remediation, and to allocate. The same three million seven hundred ninety-seven thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars from unspent, unallocated funds from bond projects to cover the Graham High School. I'll second. Is there any further discussion? I have one question. We keep talking about uh, the radiation and. You see pictures on TV and whatever, everybody rubbing things down, but we aren't doing the HVAC and the conduits and so forth first. Um, I'm being warned by the folks in Rawley that if we do it in that order, that as soon as you start cleaning the HVAC and the conduits and whatever, you're going to have to redo all those classrooms, hallways, and facilities. Uh, and I don't have the expertise to say that's correct or incorrect, but I am being told by the experts, particularly in Raleigh and other, other places. So are we jumping the gun, so to speak? That is, we're cleaning services, but not cleaning what's going to be the source of spreading the mold later, the HVAC systems and the condom. The company that's doing the remediation at the end has to go through the post remediation verification, no matter which order they do the remediation and the duct cleaning. So they don't pass on the physical and air quality tests. They have to stand behind the work and 
corrected, and they've said they would. Um, I'd agree that it makes sense if you're going to be ducks and, and dropping a lot of dust and potentially mold out. Sounds like the right way to do it. Back to our original course, we want to start school Tuesday in the name of expediting the remediation so that we could meet that goal we had to get in and clean. I don't think we dreamed that we would find what we found. And this is our first rodeo. Oh, now we know going down this pathway. Again, the company has to test out and stand behind their work. It's right not to exceed the cost with these various contracts. No. So if they decide later there's an additional issue, then we just have to pony up. They specify in their scope of work uh, what they're going to do, and then they give the uh, um, order of magnitude to match. But like in this case with the five schools that we found, we have to uh, toxigenic mold. Uh, the HVAC cleaning is an in, addi in addition to service. So wipe everything down. Then cut on the HVAC and clean it. There's renewed mold and mildew for that we have to pay extra. Yeah. And that's in the contract. What's in the contract is they're going to remediate it and they're going to pass the post remediation verification assessment in order to fulfill the contract. They would have to they would have to go back and remediate if something like that was to happen. But they have the air scrubbers and all that's all those things in there as well that hopefully would be picking up anything that's coming through there. So at this point, we have a projected cost for school. What happens if they have to go back in more time and materials? Does our cost continue to grow? Time and materials could, in could increase uh, order of magnitude. So doing it in the wrong order may cost us more money. Yeah, quite probably would. And to add to that, my concern is the roof, because that's the core of the issue. And um, and I know Woodlawn's had some really tough roofs. I mean, they've all had because they're old, and um, they're all connected. One needs the other, needs the other. Um, the point is they're safe, and this is not a repeat. You know. Um, mold is just there. It's going to pop up anywhere, but it, this is not a pop-up. <laughs> this is a tragedy. And we just have to make sure it's all right. And it's going to cost. It really is. This is something that, this is like, this is, I'll miss Kenny Wool. Never forget this. This will be it. It really will be. And uh, to the next thing. So I just want us to all think about the configuration of what one relies on the other. Get this fixed. But if this isn't, you're right back where you started. That's the important thing. Funding is absolutely crucial, but the prevention is so much cheaper than the intervention. And I just have to think about that. We need it all done correctly. We, the county, don't have any oversight at all. And we're not in the schools. We're not inspecting. We're not uh, saying, yeah, let's clean the duct work and so forth before. Between the who at the ABSS? Who's responsible for that duty overseeing? Well, I, su I suppose um, I would be. We made the determination we were going to go for remediation in the kids back in school. We don't have a plan for duct work cleaning. Never have had one in the district. Uh, but if it's associated purely with remediation, uh, the school system made the decision that we're going to open schools and we're going to move forward with remediation. We collectively in here, the boards approved the money and uh, move forward. All five commissioners, I feel comfortable. We can speak for you guys. Uh, we want students back in school as soon as possible. But we want to make sure it's safe for students and teachers before we rush them back in. I guess that's where I'm saying. I agree. And we want, and that's our goal, is to have a safe working environment for students and staff in our building. Absolutely. But with that being said, 
And you're right, John, what you said, what you said earlier. With that being said, we've got to fix these uh, HVAC units and we've got to fix these uh, roofs. I mean, because you're right, if we don't fix them post haste, we're going we're gonna to end up with the same problems again. We can't have that. So whatever it takes, whether it be a joint committee with the commissioners and the school board, uh, determining, I mean, quickly as possible, and then we're going to have to sit down and say, where are we going to find the money? And we're going to have to find it and fix these things. The only point I'm trying to make is Mr. Turner's motion. Um, I want to make sure that we have the cost. We have the number. We know what has to happen. I'm concerned about not cleaning HVAC and conduits, cleaning the surfaces, and then have to repay it because there's no cap on those, those bids, uh, having to repay it again. Doesn't Builder Services have the capacity to come in and clean the bear ducts? In the HP, in the in the HP, yes. I mean, they're back system. They're like other companies. They they would sub it out to professional cleaning companies. So, to ask a clarifying question, or actually, I have a comment and then the question. The comment was, my understanding was the early assessment from uh, the owner we're using. Um, I cannot remember builders. Builder services. Yeah. Um, those services was it? They did not expect to find oxygenic mold in the HVAC and so the best guess with the information was to proceed with remediation and then um, so that we could get as many schools done as possible. Now that they found it in the HVAC, I, I think the thinking was we would not put students in those schools until the HVAC was clean. Is that correct? Yes. Um, builder services wouldn't make the call on whether to clean those or not. That would be made through the protocols determined by the testing so, for instance, at uh, Williams High School, um, the, the level of the Aspergillus penicillin was so high in the basement level, that's they, they said, you need to do that here, the protocols, and that's why we did it there. And at Cummings and Broadview, because of the type of mold, the protocol was to do that. I think it is recommended when you you do mold remediation, no matter what kind of mold you have, that you address the HVAC system. But in the name of moving forward, getting kids in school, you're remediating, trying to clean all the surfaces. You want this going to be tested, so it has to test, um, and so that. Uh, determine that there's no presence in the air and in the uh, on surfaces based on the testing and then make a plan to come back and clean all the HVAC systems where there was no toxigenic mold. So uh, in the beginning, based on what you see, back to the walkthroughs, you don't see what you think toxigenic and you discover it in the five schools that Mr. Rogers mentioned, you discover it in the air after the fact. All of that Putting the remediation uh, in high gear moving forward and then getting kids in schools, that acceleration leads to discovering things after the fact and having to go back and change plans. I'd add, so Dr. Butler has made it clear with us his long-term plans for what students return to ensure you know, trying to anticipate or, or evaluate uh, status moving forward. So looking at Duct work ins uh, inspection and cleaning as necessary, uh, HVAC inspection and repair as necessary, roof inspection and repair. I think um, uh, Mr. Hook has shared with our board a possible plan for uh, evaluating our roofs across the district. Um, foundation inspection and repair as necessary, as we've seen in some of uh, these situations. And the humidification provided and or improved as necessary. So looking at you know, the dehumidification process and seeing if that system is available within our HVAC system. So again, trying to look at the prevention moving forward, not just fixing you know, cleaning it up, but also looking at preventing it from happening. Just know, not to brush your out. Um, when you turn on your furnace, say in this, the winter, and it's just warm and it's so nice, but from personal experience, you let a chipmunk get in your duck and die. 
your whole house smells like Mr. Dan Chipmunk. That's the power of that. We talked about this yesterday. You get, you, that is going out through that ductwork. You may not see it and you may not smell it, but get him in there and let him die and you know he's been there. And that's the same thing with this mold. It's going to blow it out everywhere. And um, the key is the safety. The funding, we need to really get this lined up. But even more important, so we need to have our plan lined up so that we're not repeating any of this. Do we have a contractor available that can do duct cleaning while we are in the process of cleaning the surfaces? Can I help? Yes. Please, thank you. I'm Joe Johnson. I'm with uh, Builder Services. Uh, so, generally, how it works with the air duct cleaning, especially in situations with those five, seven, eight school uh, that we just found out today, just I walked in, and then the three that we already had, <clears throat> they're always cleaned under negative pressure. Anybody ever been to the hospital and had to have surgery? The surgery room is in a negative pressure situation. You need to keep out into the public eye. From going outside. So, you know, so some of the notes that I was making back there when I was hearing all of it, we always clean all the surfaces first and then we clean the HVA system as they are cleaned under negative pressure. So we had to get moving because we had a dead day of due date. So, in the process, we found out that we had issues with the first two, three school. Um, that's when we certified come in to do the actual any of those systems. I just looked and wanted to make sure the HVAC cleaning contractor is certified through National Air Duct Cleaners Association. They are air system cleaning specialists, ventilation system mold remediator. All HVAC ductwork cleaning will be performed in accordance with NADCA ACR 2013. Standard for assessment cleaning and restoration of HVA system. In a nutshell, in layman's terms, it basically says, you know, that we always, it's always contained with a negative pressure from being sent out to, to the air again. So the concern of a, us cleaning the area and cleaning the duct system and us having to go back and clean it is basically self-contained in a in a layman's term. So it doesn't spread totally out. They're in the process of still getting every area that we have clean and moving so one area to the next. Does that help, help anything about that? Yeah. So just to clarify, um, the, the remediation is to get the children back and you know, get our buildings clean and open. That is correct. The long term plan in the short term, the quick long term plan is to, to address the duct work, to address the HVACs, the roofs, the foundation inspections, and the dehumidification to make sure that the remediation time and money that we've spent is not wasted because now we are actually addressing. So once we get all these schools clean and we get to a point where they get cleared, we have a plan that we're going to help. ABSS school system to walk through to find those problem areas and help climate control those areas so you're not back here in two, three months having to worry about mold coming back or microbial growth coming back in the area. We do it with several school systems throughout the state of North Carolina and it's worked out perfectly. We, we have our standards set. Everybody in our industry can do that. We do it. We do it to the, do it to the T. So, for the concern, yes, sir. Got a question for you, though. I've had several people approach me with this question. It's like logical. If, if this room is contaminated and we come in and clean it, ceilings in this room are look to me about nine and a half feet tall. If you clean six feet down. What's the issue with the three, three and a half feet that are above? Why do we not clean? Well, we've taken that standard a little bit different. We're, we're clean, actually cleaning all the way up. So that's, we don't have the protocol. I made that comment the other day, six feet, three feet. Correct. Feet. That, that protocol, we, we get the protocol from the industrial hygienist as far as. 
what needs to be done. That's good. So as we're, they're trailing us as far as us being out in front cleaning, and then once we get the problem areas that we know we have to go after really hard, that's when we step in and make sure that those areas are totally, totally to T. Is your hygienist your guy? No, we're, we're all they're all third party. Okay. Yeah, we have nothing. They're not on our phone. Thank you. Thank you. Does that answer the questions? I guess I lost it in that conversation, Joe. Um, Mr. Johnson, are you, you saying that you are or you aren't cleaning the ductwork? At the same time, or approximately the same. Yeah, at the same time. Yes. Beg your pardon. We were cleaning that those those specific school. We had we only have three: Broadview, um, Cummings, and Williams. Those are the ones that we're, we're doing right now. The tough work. Oh. Okay. Uh, the ones that just I just heard about them. Just when everybody else heard about them, so. So the, the new schools that have the toxigenic mold, those will be now under the as well. Yes, I'm assuming that the school system will send out bidding process on that. Who is who all who all is bidding? Didn't we say we were having multiple bidders in this process? Mr. Hook is um, coordinating. The last group we gave them the opportunity to bid to builder services and, and to Sasser. Okay. Have you received those bids? Yeah. Yes, we have. And we're um, attention is to move forward with it. Our recommendation is to move forward with the services. I'm just, I'm just not. I, I, I feel compelled to make a comment too. Um, I ran into the folks at Builder Services when I was down at the conference in um, Raleigh. In multiple countries in the last two weeks, so uh, traveling a lot. So that's the reason I'm late. I apologize for being late today. I thought I'd be here before three, but I couldn't be. Um, so people have pointed to me and said, "Well, they they may not do a good job if they don't do a good job." You brought them in. Well, I met them at a at a conference and referred to find out when I got back that they've actually been under contract with ABSS in the past. So. I didn't bring in any bring ABSS anything new. Up to ABSS to make a decision. All I did was bring a name to the table. Mr. Simon. Look for this question. Would you need other discussion from the, our uh, board member? Any other questions? Would you repeat the motion? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry, but that's only fair. <laughs> I think I can do it for you. Yeah. Uh, I move to transfer funds from ABSS capital reserves previously allocated to the Grand Park <laughs> project, totaling three million seven hundred ninety-seven thousand eight hundred seventy dollars. Further, we allocate the same three million seven hundred. Ninety-seven eight hundred seventy dollars unspent unallocated funds for bond projects and reallocate those funds to Graham High School. Thank you. I seconded it. Seconded. We have a motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. I do have a question, oh. Chairman. I apologize again. You hear any faster? Um, is this? All that's on the table to be does this finish what's going on right now, or is this that's just the, that's the sole motion that's on the table? No, oh, excuse me, that's not my question. My question is, is that is this covering all that you know that is mold exposure up to this point? It covers all that we have Tom. estimates for. Okay, it, is, it covers everything that we have estimates for. The only things that does not cover are five schools. They require HVAC and AO elementary. I'm sorry. And remediation for AO elementary that we do not have information for yet, which I think we can get to in a second. Are we going to be trying to address them and get them open by the by Tuesday as well? I'd like I'd like I'd like to. So is that another how we do it? I'd like to. Okay. And we don't have the numbers for those either at this point, do we? 
Mr. Johnson? So while we were talking, uh, before, we, before we do that, can, can we finish this motion? Can you further comment as to this motion? Uh, the county commissioner. Signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Passes. Continue. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Turner had asked some some gauge numbers of uh, type of school. So, an elementary school rough figure to uh, complete a full HVAC. Uh, air duct system, all that. Uh, this is in general terms now. Uh, 140 to 160,000 for an elementary school. Middle school, 180,000 to 240,000 on the high side. And then, uh, high school, 260 to 340,000. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Elementary school, 140 to 160,000. Just rough, very rough, very rough numbers. Middle school, 180 to 240,000. Uh, high school is 260 to 340,000. That's for the HVAC. That's for a budget for a full school HVAC clean, I didn't see. Just the HVAC. That, that's the whole system. That's condemned. That, that's the whole system, everything. Well, did Williams come in a lot higher than that? 346? Um, 36850. Yeah. That was Cummins, Cummins. actually. Um, Rodney came in at 237,800. Mr. So, um, I might as well continue things by asking a question along the lines. So, the, the question that I have is. Part of the understanding that we got from the testing, one of the testing firms uh, was that uh, you see mold suddenly appear on surfaces because something happened. Uh, the, the settings were not right with HVAC. In some cases, it's a a, a leak. And it seems like there are a lot of places where there was a humidity problem or something like that that happened all of a sudden. And my question, I, I think, is I know in the case of toxigenic mold, we definitely have to clean the air. But uh, I guess the second question is, so we, if we fix the HVAC and fix the humidity problems, you don't have zones where it's too wet or whatever, what is the recommendation for non-toxigenic mold as far as HVAC cleaning? I know there's there's always some amount of an HVAC. The question is when it goes from the, the line between it's okay to not clean it. And there was remediation for you know, this reason or that reason. Maybe it wasn't related to something systemic uh, versus something where, yes, we definitely have to clean it for schools. But does that make sense as far as the recommendation? Yes. I don't know if you have anything to say toward that. Well, um, definitely toxigenic. You want to clean the HVAC system. Standards, again, there's no uh, CDC standard on sport plants. There's no. Carolina standard on sport counts. The question here is do you, do you be in mold or not be in mold? Essentially. Um, but uh, you want to clean the HVAC definitely for a uh, oxygenic mold. Um, practice, you want to do it for all molds. But when you have extenuating circumstances like you want to go to school, you want to act reasonably and remediate. Air scrubbers and clean the air. Just come out fine. Make a plan. How you're going to clean the HVAC system going forward, future. I think the you did here um, around preventative maintenance. That would be one part of a preventative maintenance. You know, in the short term, around to all the schools. But then in the long term, what's the frequency if you want to do that? It's not one of the things that's done here. We're also conducting or having to conduct air quality reports as well, right? And that that helps judge what type of mold is in the air. Is in that correct? So that helps in that. Isn't that like a time-consuming air quality? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it would be one, two weeks at times. Yes, sir. It's not a report that comes like that. So 
I'm just asking that question because of how are you going to be the defense in the school that you'd like to get by? So that's been in the works um, as far as that evaluation. And that's something that as the reports come in, we'll have to alleviate on what that information is back. But the initial reports from those inspectors walking through. Isn't that going to be like a follow up? Air quality, and I know we had some schools flip to toxic, so we may think they're all so, but you know, they can flip to toxic, and we don't want to we don't want to miss that point by not doing an H back, thinking well it's okay. Because in this situation, it's not enough just to be okay. We don't do okay. We do really, and so I'm just I just I don't want to. Oh, I just don't take no chance. None. I had a question, but I think you answered it, Greg. I just want to make sure that what I heard was correct. So my question was, so we don't we don't have a time that we go in and clean our eight tracks, like you know, as we go from air to heat or heat to air, we don't yeah. routinely have anyone that comes in to check those those. So we're uh, we change filters on a routine basis. Right. Um, we hope that there's are designed to do because they're not sent. So uh, when you talk about cleaning the ductwork, say we have miles and miles of duct in the county. And the schools we, we never had a plan to routinely vacuum out under negative pressure whatever dust or whatever else might, might be in there. If you have a report of a chipmunk, <laughs> you've had reports of squirrels. Andrews had squirrels in the yeah, attic. Go, we'll in and, go in and take a squirrel out. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that, but there's no cleaning. So the changeover that you refer to, normally what happens in the school system is uh, sometime in October, we'll switch from air condition over to heat. Mm -hmm. in, in, most of the schools we have, you hear people talk about two pipe systems and four pipe systems. Two pipe system, you're either running chiller or boiler, not both. So when they say we're going to switch you over, what they're actually doing, they're turning one off and turning the other on, either pushing cold water through the lines or hot water. The four pipe system, you can run around the chiller year round, so there is no there is no changeover. Changeover doesn't relate to First, I would say would to echo a little bit of that. I mean, that's that's what needs to be done. That's the direction we need to head. But right now, our maintenance department, 25, 26 people, two or three HVAC technicians and staff. So getting all that accomplished, 40 some facilities, miles of duct work. Sure. I also have a to. also have another curious question. NFM people, what are they doing anything now during since this has happened? Are they are we utilizing them in any way whatsoever? Can we utilize them in any way? They're on a contract, and right. the contract has specific things they're supposed to do. So their management has pushed them if they're if their school's closed into another location, and they're trying to do. The detail cleaning that matches the contract, which it does have, have in it things that are supposed to be done weekly, monthly, and biannually. So basically piled up in the schools that we have open, they're taking them off. Those kind of things. Greg, did you say that, uh, to your knowledge, that the, the HVAC work had never been cleaned? As to my knowledge, I you know I can't say with certainty, but I. I don't think it has. If we had something to break down or there was a specific reason, I think that part a portion would be cleaned and remedied. But as far as a wholesale going around the district and having a routine schedule, no. Sure. Question. Um, maybe for Joe from Builder Services. Mr. Johnson, can you step back up? I'm sorry. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, the, the figure that was stated at the the Monday, the Monday meeting. Um, I think it was a 21, 22 million figure. 
units of constant homework. That figure includes the ductwork. Some of those ROMs are order of magnitude to work or HVAC. And, and what can we say to the public that's watching this meeting tonight or today, this afternoon? About the, we're, we're getting a lot of concerns from the, the public about the, the clearance form, the air quality clearance form. That's going to take a couple of weeks. What assurance can we give our public out there? Yes, they're going to have a clean building. But what assurance can we have about the air quality piece? Can we get those reports? Well, I can tell you we have roughly 2,000 people working every hotel from here. Greenberg, Durham, and our folks. 31, 34 trailers. We put trailers full of equipment out in the school. Um, they are going through the process of cleaning every school. We have, every school that we have been given, our folks are in. So they're going about their task as far as getting to that thing that you want to get to. The quality portion of it, the air quality portion of it is, is we do the utmost, we take the utmost steps for our not only the folks that are working in there, but also the folks that are getting ready to go in there. The teachers, the students. Um, it's going to be, you know, it, it, it is a, you're dealing with air quality, you're dealing with the situation that you guys are, are in, as far as with a timeline, you know, we, we're going to give a 100% shot to be able to get it. You guys can get it. We'll get as safe as possible. As safe as possible. We will not know that, and we've already, we've already talked about this several times. We will not know that until those hygienists get back in there and test. Sure. The schools will be definitely definitely be clean. There will be no problems with that aspect. Of it. I don't foresee there being an issue. But given that we've just given some information about some new schools that have come up, then that 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 is concerning. Those HVAC cleanings take time. It takes time to go through. He's right. There are miles and miles of ductwork in those schools, especially those bigger schools. It's, it's a it's a undertaking. Mr. Turner, quick, quick question and then a motion. Um, it's back East Lawn, Fall River, Eastern, Graham High School. All of those schools, I understand, also remediating surface mold. That's correct. Yes. Wood Lawn is, is new. Wood Lawn is new. So there's, is there, seems odd that there's mold in the H back at Wood Lawn, but not surface mold. Wood Lawn uh, just got a new roof, bad for years. This toxigenic mold comes about through water intrusion. So I'm not surprised it's there. Our maintenance department went through and changed all the tiles that were stained following. So all that part looks good. When they did the walkthroughs, they didn't pick up any problems. And the HVAC works relatively well there. It came back in the air. In an effort, thank you. In an effort to get people on this as quickly as humanly possible, and in an effort to provide some amount of protection for AO, which we don't know about, and in an effort to the school system to continue to use money that is allocated to it. So I, I apologize, and it's going to see it seem as though I'm a little disorganized, and I apologize for that. So I was just made aware of additional contracts that we do have out. As I failed to mention BEJ uh, Jordan Elementary, as I failed to mention South Graham Elementary, two other schools that are uh, under remediation, and the HVAC contract for buildings. Because we did, I mentioned the, the contract for Cummings and for Broadview, but I failed to mention the contract for Williams. And I have got egg on my face, and I apologize for that. So the BEJ contract 
these, these are additional monies. $405,000. South Graham Elementary is $575,000. Yes, I'm sorry. B. Jordan, I'm sorry, what was the corner five? Four hundred five thousand dollars at the Georgia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> South Graham Elementary is five hundred seventy five thousand dollars. And Williams, their HVAC addition to to remediate the HVAC system is one hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Big difference between. Back in the coming dates back. They did a lot of work in Williams. Like the auditorium got new seating. Started coming. I mean, it's beyond. I have a question for Mr. Bowden. Our brother, just Mr. Rogers. Or, um, somebody's asked me. It was reported and Mr. Bowden just commented that you have 25 maintenance on staff right now, maintenance workers on staff right now. Uh, Mr. Hook, somebody brought it to my attention that at one time there were 71 and it's down down to 25. Was that a result of moving contracts, for example, taking people out of the custodial role and, and, and contracting with the bud group? That's my first thought. Or, or, um, no, if you counted custodians, <laughs> you would have had a whole lot more. Hundreds. They, uh, general uh, school custodians would not have been in that count. I've gone back uh, to count what I know of and what since I've been around, and I would have gotten to around 56 or 57. Number 71 seems high. At times, they've had some custodians attached to the maintenance department who would be dispatched out. Right. That could account for that difference of 14, but. Based on what I know, I would say most recent years we were around 57. And I, I can verify through the last 10 years through the HR department, it's been a reduction of about 15 positions over the last 10 years that have not been filled. That was a reduction. That was a reduction in staff, of course. It was, I don't know if, you know, that was before of my time, so I can't, I can't exactly say what the goal was, but I can say those positions were not filled the last 10 years. Well, no, uh, as Chairman Paisley, Wife was a teacher, so was mine. And I brought this item to a question. It makes me wonder about efficiency. She called multiple situations, but one in particular, she needed a, a light bulb change, a basin bulb, a fluorescent bulb change in her classroom, need a ladder and whatnot to get to it. And the maintenance worker was right there. And she asked about it, and she, had, she was told she had to put in a work order while the maintenance worker was standing right there get that done now that may be following the process and keep track of the assets it just that's woefully inefficient to have have a warm body right there that can do the work and not be able to do the work when they're in the building and i don't know if that means you need a maintenance worker for building or you know i don't know what that means i don't think she knows what that means but it just does look awfully inefficient i say the biggest thing mr carr is Probably take the competitiveness of the product sector. They part of the product we're sector. We're on that boat. I mean, we're here's the, we have is in that same boat. With them. Um, well, we've seen the shortages and how yeah. devastating that can be to their clients, the DSS, law enforcement, all of those. When you don't have the amount of people you need, it just doesn't work right. And this well, is a prime example. About if we have 25, is that the right number? Is that the wrong number? I think right now we would say that's the wrong number. I would say that's the wrong number. Would too. Okay. Um, and I, I've said this, what day was it, Wednesday? As much as I like most of the people around this table, I think I like all of them, to be honest. <laughs> I don't want to be around this table again anytime soon. <laughs> um, we've got to find a way. I believe to fix the rooms and to fix the HVAC systems. Period. That's got to stop. I heard a comment about uh, crawl space or basement space. We've got to find a way to get it fixed. 
We've got that. We've got capacity to do some things with available bond funding. But it falls on ABSS to get us some numbers, which means get engineering studies and some bids so that you know what it would cost to get this work done to give us a number so we can figure out how to get that work. If we replacement route, whatever it might be, if we need to replace HVAC systems, let's find out what it's going to cost and stop this mess. Zerk. Let me uh, just bring this back into what our task is. Uh, we have monthly meetings between the two chairs and the uh, manager and the superintendent. Uh, we have oversight committees. We have the administrative that's gone away. It's now combined. Yeah. <laughs> and so forth. Um, and these are times to bring that up. And I hope that our three boards can have some understanding about we're not going to cut off the HVAC, for example, during the summer. All these sort of things. And just have a work together as opposed to uh, what's happened in the past. But I, I'm begging you guys to listen to zone in today on these problems. Thank you. I'm trying to shut you down, but I appreciate that. <laughs> and, and to that end, Mr. Chairman, uh, I was going to make a motion about the HVAC, but we got to get some other information here too. Be Jordan, I'd just like to follow our procedures. What is this? What is the scope and severity of the issue? At e. Jordan, it's here. Jordan, Jordan, yeah. So uh, it's throughout uh, the portion of the school, not in the not in the new way. Services. School, Services. That yes. school was new when I was in the fifth grade. So it's actually the you everything. <laughs> 30, it's years like old. me and Thomas Jefferson was 30, on the watch it. Me and Thomas Jefferson was on the program together. I saw him saying Pam, you didn't have to make that revelation. He's <laughs> full <laughs> face. <laughs> And uh, South Graham Elementary. It's the same thing. It's throughout portions of various hallways in the older part of the building, but not in, in the newer. And and those 405 and the 575 are for remediation of the mold where it exists and the buildings where it exists. Um, 980. 980,000 dollars. I have two motions. H back Williams. Uh, that's going to be separate. That was going to be the motion that I was going to. Sorry. Um, all right. There's currently, uh, currently there are plans and allocations for capital reserve money for the Southern High School roof, roughly $4.1 million, right? What I'd like to do is to uh, to move to transfer funds from ABSS capital reserves previously allocated to the Southern High School roof project totaling $980,000. Further, that we move to allocate the same $980,000 from unspent, unallocated funds from bond projects and allocate that to the Southern High School. Repeat that last amount, please. I think I've got it in my phone. It's the same amount. So that we move to transfer ABSS capital reserves previously allocated to the Southern High School roof project, totaling $980,000, which is the cost to remedy the other two schools. And further, that we then move to allocate that same $980,000 from unspent, unallocated bond funds to the Southern High School roof project. That's the motion. I'll second. Any further discussion from our board? I have a question for Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, you said 980 twice. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving it from one spot to the other. I'm just wondering why. Well, it, it, uh, capital reserves completely from stand. Uh, you, I think you mentioned capital reserves. I'm just asking before. Past two years, we had allocated school six six zero less than one. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I think the four point eight is the total of those two. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and this would take some of it on i mean some of some of that money in old remediation but bring same amount of money back into that project so it doesn't understand. any other questions from my board we're ready for a vote all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed thank you sir what is i hope in my final motion for the evening mr chairman um by my count Worst case, HVAC, East Lawn, Eastern, Hall River, Graham High, Wood Lawn, factoring into the fact that whether they're an, uh, elementary, middle, or high, uh, when you add the $115,000 for Williams, I come up with $1.355 million. That's 160 for East Lawn worst case, 340 for Eastern worst case, 160 for Hall River worst case, 340 for Graham High School worst case, and 240 for Wood Lawn worst case, 115 for West for Williams. I come up with 1355. Ms. Evans, the, the pay go that uh, ABSS gets is 3.3 .3 million a year. Uh, they'd be used 1.2 at this point for more radiation. What has been indicated? Using 2.1 remaining. I would, if we were to allocate immediately advance all of the 2.1 remaining PAYGO and take out the 1.355 million for HVAC, that would leave a total of $745,000 that could be used for the AO project. There's a lot of slop in that, but that's a pot of money that is you could use at your discretion for the project in the year and it, had, it handles the alligator closest to the canoe so i move that we immediately advance 2.1 million dollars for abss for paygo and put use on these remaining projects at their discretion okay any discussion from our board all in favor signify by saying aye aye any opposed Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell, are you with us? I am. Uh, hearing the, I believe it was three motions total, four motions total. Sorry. Mr. Okay. Mitchell is traveling today yeah. and joining us via phone. Um, I believe we need motions from the Board of Education, is that correct? That is correct, Madam Chair. Okay, and those need to match those dollar dollar amounts. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you can you um, help me walk walk me through this motion? Unless one of my colleagues wants to attempt to. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell, could you then just uh, have your board collectively vote on our three motions without repeating? I think I think that's fine, Chair Paisley. Okay. And I, I think I think essentially the motion is to um, accept and then authorize the expenditure for the purposes that have been discussed, uh, the funds that have been transferred or allocated from the commissioners. But no, I don't think you need to repeat word for word uh, each of Mr. Turner's motion. Thank you. Are you still moving? I'd like to make going? a motion, Madam Chair, if I may, that we accept the uh, motions of approval from the county commissioners today on the different uh, different schools that were needed that were included in those motions. Thank you, Mr. Engel. Is that sufficient, Mr. Mitchell? I think that's sufficient, and also just to authorize and the expenditure of the funds for the purposes that have been discussed in the meeting. So moved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Um, is there a second? Second. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Marsh. Any discussion from the Board of Education? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously 6 0. Thank you, Education. Thank you, Board of Commissioners. Wait, wait, wait. We have, since we're partners, we have questions. The floor is yours. So I want to try one more time with the HVAC cleaning. 
far as to express the, the thing that I was trying to say. And um, maybe we, this is a question. Um, we got to want to uh, come back, and it's not something that can be do now. But if I, um, the things that you have to have to have a mold problem at you know, water temperature and time, and there are always spores everywhere. There, there will be some in the HVAC. The question is, is this. So if you, at the very bottom, you have water infiltration through a wall, it's not an HVAC issue as much. Okay, so probably there, it doesn't, it would need to be checked, but it would be already versus something that's toxigenic mold that definitely has to be cleaned. And then you can imagine something that was in the middle, such as a single room or something like that, maybe a single zone where there was a problem with air mixing. And so really it was clear that there was a humidity problem plus, um, you know, what's already there. So it didn't mold in the rest of the school. Um, and then it did mold in some portion of the school where there was a known problem with, again, the mixing or the humidity or something like that. And maybe that is a kind of a third tier priority. I think everyone agrees we need to get completely through the HVAC systems and get them clean. But as far as prioritizing it, as far as kids getting back in school and that kind of thing, is that something that the they can speak to or do you have any comments there? I could see how, okay, for these schools, uh, we probably don't need to do it immediately. And for these other schools, we definitely have to do it before kids go back at like the five toxigenic schools. So um, try again. Okay. Well, he kind of spoke to that. He, he kind of said that, that the ones that we've got the pay on or we've got the money on, um, that he was taking that care of those immediately. And then you put the school, your kids into school and you can go ahead uh, along the way, um, you know, get them, the uh, ducks cleaned. So I guess the question is, are there schools that do not have toxigenic mold, but where the, the load and the HVAC is high yeah. enough that we need to do it before kids are back in? And as far as I know, that there, it's always a line and it's a, it's a call as far as, you know, different um, considerations. So I guess, I guess that's kind of the question. And if you've got any, input. I know they would say do absolutely everything or, but again, you know, kind of the, the case for me where you know that it's not in the HVAC, it came through the wall. Um, and then you know that it's toxigenic mold. Where would you draw the line as far as schools? Are there schools beyond the five? I know we're waiting for results. So anything else that comes back toxigenic, that has to be done. But the, the question is, are there other schools where you can say, we really need to do this? And maybe this is not something that, okay, I'll let you speak to that. And if not, maybe that's a question we can ask. Uh, I'll say something real quick on that because I know Dr. Butler has had some talk with us about long-term plans and looking at those foundation needs. You know, like we have some schools that may, uh, Williams, for example, I know we've, we've had engineers to look at that situation with brain engine and I know a couple of commissioners sure joined, the steps. Yes, joined us and saw some of that moisture coming through the wall. And so continue the evaluation and see what those needs are so we can um, spoke earlier about addressing or sharing that need um, to see to be able to address that i know that is a target one dr butler's long term so absolutely all the we need to take care of root causes and find out where the things need to be fixed and the root i guess my very specific question is in addition to the toxigenic other schools that you're aware of or any thoughts about HVAC systems that should be cleaned before the trip back. Only at Williams so far, and that was the hygienist recommending because of the extremely high concentration of sports in the lower level. That's back to the foundation issue for the water or infusion water. I suppose you'd say that humid air is heavier than the rest of the, air of the building and in the basement where it's collecting. So, uh, Definitely where there's uh, oxygenic mold on the head. In all of the cases now, uh, only when the, the concentration is such uh, that uh, so yes, we need, we need to do that. All the rest of them, I think we can use reason at this point. National, how we get the kids in school, make a plan, go back and get that done in a timely manner. Okay, today's Friday, and everybody will keep talking about Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, 
So, um, I said, parents say, so on the toxigenic schools, are you guys recommending to go back to them? Or what does this look like? Because we have just spent so much money swapping it around, really, and talking about all this. But what does this mean? Because we keep talking about kids to go back to school, but I haven't heard you know, a stamp approval. Are we going or not? So Do we not know? And I understand that. It's Friday. So our plan, we're still planning on school being open on Tuesday. Now, it, it may look different to just we're trying to maximize the space that we have that's available um, and that's safe and healthy for our students and our staff. Okay. So we'll be in communication. That was one thing I, I'd asked to, sh to share at the end. We're, we're working closely with our inspectors and with our aviation um, companies um, to once these buildings are, are clean, be able to what plan we can move forward with. But we also want to make sure we keep our parents in plan as far as what that plan is. So we're on the weekend. Folks are still working through the weekend to keep an eye on that situation. We don't want to get too close to Tuesday to, to drop news, um, but we want to make sure we keep our parents, our boys, and keep parents informed on where and how that's going to happen. Real time for patience and understanding. Real time for all of us, no matter what. And I had um, called Sandy um, about a comment that was made that was going on the conversation Wednesday. Uh, I have had several people ask me about what is this $75 million? And so I wanted to ask Sandy if she could just clear about clarify that because I remember when Dr. Thor, we kind of had this list through the state, a survey, like based on square footage. What would it take to fix every single thing, even down to blinds? I mean, even, I mean, anything. It was way up there. And so I said, is this part of that? Um, so, Sandy, would you clarify that? Because I know you've got some information out just to settle so people can understand what that is. Sure. Um, and let me know if this is, is giving you what you're asking. Um, so I had been on the board for about six months, and there was an email put to the board where the county had requested a list of potential unfunded projects to include in their capital plan for future discussion at the TRC meeting. Um, this is not an all-inclusive list as other, other items may and will fail before all items are addressed. So this was not an inclusive list, but it was a spreadsheet that totaled $73,644,332. And an email a couple of days later followed where Dr. Benson was addressing uh, specifically the, the unfunded projects and the capital that we had received to date. And it was a million dollars in 2019. And then FY20 was the first year of our PAYGO, uh, the partnership between the two boards. And that was the 3.3 in 2020. So that was the number that I referenced in the meeting um, the other day in my comments. So well, it's not an all-inclusive list yeah. for the county, but it was kind of the, these are the ones that need to be on the horizon for Dr. Thorpe back in uh, May of 2020. Well, like Mr. Carter was saying, we've got a lot of work to do, and we've got possibilities with bond money. Because that bond money was about getting the school system where it needs to be, whether we were building, adding on, or fixing. And that's the conversation that we're going to need to have. And I encourage us all to continue to work together like this, because we are all here about the same reason. That's what matters. Absolutely. May I say something? Yes, Mr. Lashley. Um, you were right about your timeline, about what was submitted to the commission. And I'm just going to take this opportunity to congratulate Mr. Turner and myself. Because when we heard that that night, since we we're liaisons to ABSS, we got together. That's where you got, we would like to help get you. ABSS to tell us what the top 10 priorities are. Are you concerned with? Once we got that list, and I think the time it was Dr. Thorpe who presented it, that's when me and Craig sat down and said, okay, let's fund the top seven. That's the night that they came in. But I just want to let you know, those, those uh, requests did not go unheard. We sat down and tried to figure out a way. That's when me and Mr. Turner suggested that we should probably have a preventative maintenance plan. Now, I'm just going to say this, that the previous administration, uh, Dr. Thorpe and Dr. Benson, when I came and met with them, that's one of the things that I suggested at the time, I've been in the seat two months, this is what we need going forward. And I do think, Mr. Hook, that you are right. 
there's only one way to fix these problems on the roll, and that's a preventative maintenance plan. It may actually, a preventative maintenance plan, I understand, is going to be time consuming to put together. But I think that was a critical time to do that, considering this has happened. Also, I believe going forward that if we look at this preventative maintenance plan, it may actually keep us out of the weeds, so to speak, and maybe this situation won't occur to the extent that it has. So I just want to let you know, Ms. Graves, that those requests did not go unheard. We sat down and we tried to figure out something. How do we tackle this problem going forward? And we did that. We did that last year, we did that the year before. And that's why I brought up in the meeting on Monday the importance of looking at this capital reserve fund. And Mr. Turner used those funds that we had set aside as a commissioner's board for these issues. I just wanted to let you know that oops, this is the one heard. We heard you loud and clear, and we realized as a board that we have some work. That's why we sat down and try to knock some of these out, and that's why we allocated almost twenty million, seventeen million, three hundred million, seventeen million three hundred thousand dollars for you. Just wanted to you let. Chairman, I renew my motion to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we hold that motion, Mr. Turner? <laughs> Mr. Bowden, did you have something? Yes, I just want this for the public. What is the overall figure that we are at? Does any of our finance folks know the final everything that's been shuffled and reallocated? So this is just not what's coming up, but it's what's been allocated. Yes, what we've done Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Oh, love. That's one, way to finance, that's one way to describe it, Chuck. <laughs> and, and while they're doing that, um, I was going through my list of some of the schools that hasn't been mentioned that aren't on the remediation list or HVAC list. It looks like, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hook, Ian Yoder, Hillcrest, Smith, North Graham, Graham Middle. Um, Elon is on that list. Southeast is on that list. Virtual and CTEP. But I'm I was looking at the EM Yoder, some of our older aged buildings, which is Yoder, Hill, Smith, North Graham, Graham Metal. So as of right now, as we sit here today, those buildings are not getting touched at all, other than our MFM training contract. That's correct. But we will have our for this time they're not they were not yet school not yet so we don't necessarily have any type of go-ahead or anything allocated or funding set aside to try to go ahead i mean let's be honest let's be realistic it's coming test the scores i'll bet a paycheck on it that we're going to get reports out of these one of these five if not all five Gotta be realistic about it. Um, what can be done to, to go ahead and move them along quicker and get them on our list? So they don't. Uh, what these gentlemen said on the school board, we not only uh, allotted money each of those years, what they were the liaison, uh, that we've got a plan of a number of years for some of these projects to be funded and so forth. Uh, the sad thing is we just went through our budget on June the 19th, passed it, and now we're coming up with just tons of other monies. We cannot go back to the taxpayers and ask for additional funding at this point. Uh, Chairman, I'm just, I'm just talking about the remediation or the... the oh, I'm, I'm saying, so, so and Mr. Turner, I hope your motion is to adjourn mm -hmm. at this point. I'm not ready yet, Mr. No, Turner. No, if, if you could kind of indulge us just a little more. I would like my answer. Ms. Evans, do you have a number for us? Yes, ma'am. Um, the funds that have been allocated or reappropriated for all, for all three days is $15,377,870. One time, please. Absolutely. Fifteen million three hundred seventy-seven thousand eight hundred fifty dollars. Thank you, Miss Evans. Thank you.
Any other questions? From, I would like to get some clarification on Yoder Hillcrest Smith North Graham Graham Middle. We see what can be. I don't want to put Joe on the spot again, but there's some ballpark figures out there to go ahead and get these on the list. Um, I think that's that's important moving forward into the weekend. Well, Those are. Well, he gave uh, Mr. Johnson gave us some numbers, some ballpark figures that that we can go on. To, Those were all, I think those were all elementary schools, right? They were correct. Grand Middle. Grand Middle. How many did this count? Have a figure so that the seniors don't run out of uh, right. 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 Just for H back. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Oh. So the, the ranges that Mr. Johnson gave us are really just for H back cleaning. So if those schools come back and they need mediation, that's a different conversation. Is that what I'm understanding as well? Those schools have been through. I'm sorry, I'm gonna jump in. Those schools are schools that have had the walk through. They, they have not the inspectors in that mm -hmm. items um, that they see that seen firsthand that, that need to remediation. They've, they've seen concern. areas of concern. Tests are being sent off. Those sites, uh, those those sites are, right are in operation now. We didn't have visible uh, reported from the field. We're awaiting the results. Yeah, be determined. I don't want to delay this, but I'm just I'm just trying to see what we can do for these five. Get them done and on the list. Um, Mr. Johnson, do you have a can you tell us anything as far as which on the remediation do? side of things for these four elementary schools and one? Middle school. I think we've. Uh, so I think I've already given that. Uh, no, my school, but we have not got anything back on it. All right. Mr. Dante, can you step? Forward? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hate to keep doing that to you. Everybody's going to. I do not have those numbers. We have not got anything back on yet. I have provided. We have provided you that, that bottom line number, correct? Uh, yes, uh, yes, there was a number provided that uh, over all all schools. He's looking. Can I also say, because if I'm wrong, because I was asking Craig, remember when he made the motion about the PICO money, he sort of gave us more $745,000. So I think we have that that hasn't been allocated to anything yeah. yet. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. So we have seven hundred forty-five thousand dollars more sitting there to allocate to these five schools plus, if we need them. Plus some more plus so. don't reach the maximum range of HVAC. Mm -hmm. uh, HVAC yeah, you use the high number on the, yeah. the worst case scenario on the. So when I yeah, so if you look at that, I think talking about a, a million bucks. Tom, let's do it. Yeah, I think the money's probably there. I think the money's there. So are, you, are you saying you want to make a motion about taking that 745 and allocate it to these schools if needed? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, let's be realistic. It's going to be needed at some point. I think it's, it's already allocated yeah. by the commissioners and by the board for that. So. so I think that. I mean, we, we accepted that money to use at our discretion for his. His um his motion. So would we need to take say okay then if <laughs> are we going to say then do we have to make another motion to say okay then we're going to take that seven forty five and we're going to allocate it to these five schools if needed. I mean wouldn't that be redundant? I, we're not I, think good shape. Adam, got I think I think collectively we're in good shape. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, think we're we blessed. Yeah, absolutely blessed. So we can tell Yoder Smith, North Graham, Graham Middle that we're coming. Yes. Yeah. Hang on. You're coming. Your school will get yes, is, is there any information to suggest that there's mold in there? Yeah, it's our knowledge. Not visibly. Not, not visibly. I would like to just take a moment to thank Mr. Rogers. Uh, Dr. Butler is traveling today. I'd like to thank Mr. Rogers for um, 
for stepping in for that. I would like to say thank you to all of you around this table and to our staff members from, from the county and school, school system. It's been a long week. This has been the longest meeting across three days. Thank you all for your, your commitment, your patience, your diligence. Um, Ms. York. Are we on the agenda for Tuesday? We do have a report um, that we're hoping to hear as an update from the students. Um, whenever it's appropriate, <laughs> we would like to um, hear from them. And then we're also inviting our bond folks to the table for a different discussion. Okay. So just an update of where we are right now Correct. in the bond situ the bond situation. The situation. Right. Not hand in, uh, Dr. Butler. And Mr. Hook yes, for that, that presentation. Be, yes. so, that's on our agenda. It's primarily for a report. Another meeting. Yes. The last item on the agenda, I think, as well. So, <laughs> In other words, you don't want to take too long. Because you're at the end. Dr. Butler just wanted to make sure that we are in the lunch. lunch. The is to be there and what was the expectation? Um, then Mr. Rogers will be in touch with our families to those here with us today and those watching being live stream as quickly as possible as we move through the weekend to navigate what that reentry plan looks like for all of our schools. We do ask for some flexibility and some adaptability of our community, um, from our families, our staff, our students. We are in a crisis mode. So we just give us some grace as we get through the weekend. We'll get as much information as quickly as possible to you um, and to, to hopefully welcome our students back at the arms on Tuesday. Mr. Par uh, Dr. Parker. Well, I have one, one more question. The, so the remediation uh, dashboard is the thinking to update that through the weekend as we learn things so if parents want the most up-to-date information there's not been an official communication that would be where to look as far as whether your school where your school is in process yes that's the goal of the dashboard give, give less a little time just to get it moved over but yes that is the one. dr parker's number on there he'll handle it yeah Les. You're working all weekend but no web development any further business <laughs> before the board of education is there a motion to agree yeah. the board of education so moved thank you gentlemen thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor signify by this is just Board of Education. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Executive. Board of Education is adjourned. Now the county commissioners are still in session. I'll second his motion. <laughs> Thank you. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Now. Oh.